Good news, everyone. We're back with more Futurama. This is Season 7, Episode 22. Last time, Bender had to get his body back. His sweet, sweet ass he was being used to save lives, though, and he had to give it up. But thankfully, it came back to him all on its own. Such an incredibly touching story of a man and his assy. This episode, though, is called Leela and the Genestock. Clearly a reference to Jack and the Beanstalk, so maybe something to do with her genetic mutation? Are vines with beans gonna start growing out of her? I don't know. Last few episodes of the season are already up on Patreon in the link in the description below. Full reactions are there. Leave a like and let's get started. Hey guys, remember Carlos, the elderly one-legged cowboy who lives next door? I beat him up and took his hat. Come on, let's go to a redneck bar. Oh, And Farns with already ready. Everybody's already ready. <laughs> this city slicker's about to get his nuts bolted. Oh yeah? If I don't set a new club record, I'll eat my hat. Oh, wait, that's a new record, technically. A new club record. Yeah. Artist <clears throat> Whoa. <laughs> this is a new record. Somewhere in Texas. Oh my God. Oh no! It's a consciousness. <laughs> God forgive us for creating this. <laughs> little drunk. My hand is stuck. There must be glue on the saddle. Ah, just as I had no idea. You're breaking out in suction cups. What? Oh. What is it, Dr. Tenderman? Is it serious? Tenderman? I'm afraid these suction cups are merely the first phase of a process called Squidification. So how many cures are there for this disease? <laughs> how many cures? None. <laughs> oh, that was optimistic. It's like yeah. I'm cursed. Isn't it bad enough that I occasionally lay an egg? Now I have to become a squid too? You do? <laughs> you do? I don't care if that operation will only delay the tentacles. Somehow we gotta find a way to pay for it. We'll sell old Bessie. Fry, take the old gal to market and get the best Old Bessie. Oh man. The ship? The ship? She's worth a lot of money. I'm gonna sell her at market so my girlfriend can get surgery for her squidification. Jeepers. My wife had that. They're the cure all that cures a lot. Rheumatism, botulism, seborrhea, diarrhea, desiccation, perspiration, common cold, and uh um uh squidification. If you say so. Wait a second. Don't fall for this. Means possibly cure her. Thanks for being smart. Uh, magic. They fell from the sky. <laughs> and now he's gonna believe it. Now you tell me. Two magic beans. <laughs> oh, you sack of bags of buckets of idiots. There's no such thing as magic oh. beans. And here they go. To my wonderful friends, words can't express how thoughtful you've been. I don't want to make you suffer through this with me. So I've decided to move underground. You could go up into the heavens instead. <laughs> uh, I'll take the beanstalk less traveled. <laughs> uh, wow, I've never been up this high before. Well, in a ship. Space, I guess. Yeah. Whoa, whoa! It's collapsing! Huh. Unicorn! What? I, I guess for the better. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, this situation deteriorated fast. Mom's sons, your intruder, mother. Oh, that is one scuggly critter. Oh, you've discovered my floating genetic engineering facility. Our experiments would be illegal on Earth, but up here, I'm above huh. the law. This is Colossus, the beanstalk project. Ordinary beans are a magical fruit, but they're tiny and pathetic. So we spliced elephant DNA into their chromosomes. <laughs> what? The only place you're going is nowhere. You've got some freaky DNA, and I want to see what's in your genes. <laughs> genes with a G! <laughs> Leela's risky. Fall down. How can I help you? Fry? Where's Leela? We haven't seen her since she sprouted tentacles. What? She didn't move down there? Then where is she? That's what I called to ask you! Remember that mural on my cousin's van? It's like it came to life! I keep telling you we didn't grow up together! Help! <laughs> Help! 
Oh, Leela, it's so great to see your beautiful face again. Let me give you a hug. Uh, okay. Go in that corner. It's the hugging corner. Instead, I went to bed because I'm tired now. This is about your tentacles. <laughs> Look, Leela, there's nothing about your body that could ever shock me so... She's all tentacle. No problem. I'll bend the door open. You can do that? Bend a wooden door? I know that and you know that. But this door looks pretty stupid. He did it. What time is it? Time for you to shut up. Adventure time? Didn't know they could do that on TV. Maybe one of these switches turns off that scary noise. It's not the Patton Oswalt giant, right? Okay, big guy. We won't let her hurt you anymore. Uh. Oh! She just pushed him. Oh. Yay, they got away. Hello. With the giant cat dragged in. <laughs> Don't worry, mother. We'll save you. <laughs> Quick, get out. Jump out. Yay. <sighs> Aw. That's kind of cute. Whatever it was that you and I had together. Goulash? No. I want to spend my life with you. No, you no. don't. I mean, look at me. Big deal. Looks change. No matter what happens, you'll always be Leela. And think about what all these tentacles can do. The places they can re- I I'll stop. I just wanted to thank you for helping me engineer the perfect bean. You've made me a very richer woman. Richer. What? My beanstalks now Whoa. have suction cups to keep them from collapsing. Oh, look That's at that. That's horrible. Is it? Now the world's starving masses have a cheap, abundant source of nutrition. I suffer from hereditary gigantism. Hmm. Or I did, until mom cured me of my awful disease using genetic engineering. That's why she had me hooked up in her lab. Oh. Well, but even if genetic engineering feeds the hungry and cures some giant e guy, even, even it then? doesn't make it right. We have no idea what the long-term <laughs> effects will be. I mean, yeah. And once that genie's out of the bottle, I can cure you too. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> okay, I'm in. <laughs> oh, Leela. <laughs> that was great. Oh, and we just left this to grow forever. This was an enjoyable episode. The cowboy themed bars seemed like fun. I wonder if there are cowboy bars in like real world New York City for those who miss the countryside. Bender set a new record for the shortest time on the Bucking Bugalow. Farnsworth immediately tied it and floated down like a feather. Leela, though, with the new suction cups on her hands, just could not let go and was getting flung back and forth so viciously. And okay, I was kind of right about this episode having to do with Leela and her genetics, but squidification? Her whole body was just tentacles. And at first I thought it would just be her arms and she'd have arms like her mother, but the process just kept going. And Fry said that he probably gave it to her because he doesn't wash his hands for years at a time. Which brings me to my new segment, Disgusting Statistics About Men. So yeah, the CDC has reported that 65% of women wash their hands after using the bathroom. Kind of disgusting, a third of the women you shake hands with haven't washed their hands. But for men, the number is only 31%. 31% of men don't wash their hands after using the bathroom. That's ridiculous. Definitely glad I don't have to interact with people face to face for my job. Haven't shaken anyone's hands since before the pandemic anyway, so it's fine, but yeah, that's been disgusting statistics about men. But seriously, Fry, wash your hands, man. I really loved Hermes' line about the squidification, though. So how many cures are there for this thing? Just so blissfully optimistic. Unfortunately for Leela, there was no cure. She was lamenting her fate and said, isn't it bad enough that I occasionally lay an egg? Which, what? This show is so good at just giving out tiny little details that are actually really funny or just earth shattering but never addressing them again so like i guess once per menstrual cycle she'll lay an unfertilized egg i mean at this point i should know better than to ask questions about this show it's just too much ridiculousness most people know the meme would you still love me if i was a worm leela's situation was pretty close to that but fry continued to do everything in his power to help her and be with her and i'm surprised the rest of the crew were so 
down to sell the ship, the key part of their delivery service company, in order to get money for a procedure that would only slow the squidification. Though if they cared about her that much, they probably shouldn't have put Fry in charge of making that exchange. He literally gave up the ship for some magic beans, which turned out to be some genetically modified beans. And yeah, GMOs are one of those terms some people freak out about. We'll talk about it more later. Uh, Leela felt quite like Spider-Man in this episode, the way she was swinging up those vines. I feel like we used to hear Leela say hiya a lot more often. It would have been funny if she just swung up saying hiya a lot. I miss it. But yeah, we saw the characters from Adventure Time in this episode having been strung up. I actually haven't seen that show, but I wonder if there's a corresponding episode in Adventure Time when they're strung up and we see Fry and Bender run past them. But yeah, the whole thing about genetic engineering is funny. Like, this is the first time in the series that Mom has done something that seemed altruistic, but I'm sure that creating an unlimited supply of food somehow falls within her plans of making as much money as possible. Can't sell stuff to people who have starved to death, after all. But also, she does maintain a pleasant persona for the public, so this could be part of that. And yeah, GMOs are essential to our future, and genetic studies can have so many applications. At the same time, I wouldn't want mom in charge of them, or, or any other mega corporation for that matter. Like, I don't object to the field as a whole like Leela does, but it was also very funny seeing Leela immediately cave on her principles when mom said she could turn her back. Like, she didn't even change her mind when they were talking about feeding all the starving people in the world, or curing, curing the guy of gigantism. I think I've mentioned this with a previous episode of Futurama, actually, but it's super realistic for people to be against certain policies until it affects them directly. Like, I know a lot of older people who were very much against gay people until somebody in their family came out as gay. I unfortunately also know a lot of people who continue to be anti-LGBTQ even afterwards. But yeah, like it or not, GMOs are here to stay. Like, if you have concerns, the best thing you can do is to make sure the government doesn't get lobbied into allowing unsafe research and creating unethical practices. I don't know too much about the field of GMOs, but the government getting lobbied in favor of corporate interests is typically how it goes. All right, fun episode, full reactions on Patreon. We're four weeks ahead there too, so we've already wrapped up season seven. Leave a like, and I'll see you guys soon with more. Bye, friends.